Lord's my shepherd, I have everything I need, mercy and love follow me. Though I walk through the dark valley of death, I will not be afraid, for He's here. Good to be in the house of the Lord. Good to see you all. And we want to say welcome and hope you're having a great week. And uh, anybody that's watching through the internet, we welcome them as well. We'd like for you to stand right now and let's ask God's blessing on this service. Thank you for being here today. And I hope you came to receive from the Lord. Let's ask His blessing. Father, we thank you for the day today and we thank you for your many blessings. We thank you for the opportunity to be back in the house of God, Lord God, where we can worship together as a family. We pray for your blessing this morning. We ask you to inhabit our praise and our worship as we offer it to you. We ask you these things in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. amen. Our God is good, amen. It's good to be in his house. Good to worship him together. Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. His love endures forever. For he is good, he is above all things. His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise. With the mighty hand and outstretched arm, His love endures forever. For the life that's been reborn, His love endures forever. Sing praise. From the rising to the setting sun, His love endures forever. By the grace of God, we will carry on. His love endures forever. Sing praise. Oh, we worship you, Lord. Sing praise. Sing praise. Sing praise, oh, we will lift our worship, Lord. Sing praise, sing praise, hallelujah. Sing praise, forever God, He is faithful. Forever God, He is strong. Forever God, He is with us. Forever, God, you are strong. Forever, God, he is with us. Forever, forever, forever. Turn your ear to heaven and hear the noise inside. The sound of angels are the sound of angels song all this for our king we could join and sing all to christ our king oh how constant how divine this song of ours will rise oh how constant how divine this love of ours will rise will rise oh praise him oh praise him he is holy he is holy oh praise him oh praise him he 
is holy, Lord. You are holy. Turn your gaze to heaven and raise a joyous noise. The sound of salvation come, the sound of rescued ones, all this for a king. To sing all to Christ our King. Oh, how infinite and sweet this love so rescuing. Oh, how infinitely sweet this great love that has redeemed as one we sing. Oh, praise Him. Oh, adore you this morning, Lord God. We love you and praise you and thank you because you are good, Lord Jesus. We lift up our praise. We thank you, God, because you are worthy. We thank you that you've saved us, Lord God, and that you poured your spirit out on us, Lord. So we lift up our praise and we honor and adore you, Lord God. Over the mountains and the sea, your river runs with love for me. And open up my heart and let the healer set me free I'm happy to be in the truth and I will daily lift my hands I will always sing of when your love came down Lord over the mountains and the sea your river runs with love for me and I will open up my heart and let the healer set me free oh, I'm happy to be in the truth and I will daily lift my hand I will always sing of when your love came down Lord I could sing of your love forever Lord I could sing of your love forever I could sing of your love forever I could sing of your love forever over the mountains and the sea his river runs with love for me and I will open up my heart and let the healer set me free Lord, to be in your truth and I will daily lift my hands I will always sing of when your love came down Lord and I could sing of your love forever I could sing of your love forever I could sing of your love I could sing of your love forever. Oh, I feel like dancing. It's foolishness, I know. Hmm. Oh, but when the world has seen the light, they will dance with joy. 
like we're dancing now, Lord. I could sing of your love forever, Lord. I could sing of your love. Lord, we lift our worship to you. I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love. We lift our worship, Lord. I sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love forever. Lord, your love is amazing. Your, your grace that you give us, Lord God, the peace that is within us when you are here, Lord. We thank you. We love you. We praise you this morning, Lord Jesus. You were the word in the beginning. The one with God, the Lord Most High. Your hidden glory in creation, now revealed in you, our Christ. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name. Of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. You didn't want heaven without us. So Jesus, you brought heaven. My sin was great, your love was greater. What could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a wonderful name it is. Nothing compares this what a wonderful name it is the name of Jesus death could not hold you the veil tore before you you silenced the boast of sin and grave the heavens are roaring the praise of your glory for you are to life again Lord you have no rival you have no equal now and forever God you reign yours is the kingdom yours is the glory yours is the name above all names what a name it is what a powerful name it is the name of Jesus Christ my King what a powerful name it is nothing can stand against what a powerful name it is the name of Jesus what a powerful name it is the name of Jesus. Oh, what a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. Lord, there is power in your name. We worship you. We thank you. We love you. And we honor you today, Lord God. You are good, Lord Jesus. And I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like but I've heard tender whispers of love in 
the dead of night and you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone you're a good good father it's who you are who you are it's who you are and I'm loved by you it's who I am it's who I am it's who I am oh when I've seen many searching for one serves far and wide but I know they're all searching for answers only you provide and you know just what we need before we say a word you're a good good father it's who you are it's who you are it's who you are i'm loved by you it's who i am who i am it's who i am cause you're perfect in all of your ways perfect in all are perfect in all of your ways to us oh you are perfect Lord you are perfect in all of your ways you are perfect in all of your ways you are perfect in all of your ways to us oh. So undeniable, I, I can hardly speak peace. So unexplainable, I, I can hardly think as you call me. Deeper still as you call me deeper still as you call me deeper still into love 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 lord you are good good father to you are to you are to you are i'm loved by you to i thank you Jesus we thank you for the love that you showed us Lord we thank you for dying on the cross Lord Jesus so that we might be forgiven so that we might be loved by you Lord God we love you and we worship you Lord I give myself away I give myself away so you can use me I give myself away Lord let that be the cry of our hearts this morning I give myself away so you can use me I give myself away oh Lord to you I give myself away so you can use me I give myself away mm -hmm. I give myself away so you can use me here I am here I stand Lord my life is in your hand Lord, I'm longing to see your desires revealed in me. Lord, I give myself away. Oh, to you, Lord, 
I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away, oh Lord. I give myself away so you can use me. Take my heart, take my life. As a living sacrifice, all my dreams, all my plans, Lord, I place them in your hands. I give myself away. away so you can use me I give myself away we lift our worship to you this morning Lord I give myself away so you can use me take my heart take my life as a living sign sacrifice Lord all my dreams all my plans Lord I place them in your hands I give myself to you Lord we love you Jesus I give myself away so you can use me I give myself away, oh, I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. We lift our hearts to you this morning, Lord. Everything that I have, Lord God, I, I lift up to you, Lord God. I ask, Lord God, that you pour your desires into my heart, Lord. I ask, Lord God, that you make what I desire, Lord, the same as what you desire, Lord God. We ask you, Lord Jesus, to fill us with your Holy Spirit, Lord God. I ask you, Lord God, to just fill us with the things that you would have us do, Lord Jesus. I give myself to you, Lord. I give myself away to you, Lord Jesus. We just lift our praise. We honor you this morning, Lord God. Uh, this morning, I want to speak to you on um, deception, and um, I, I think one of the probably, I don't know if it's the greatest enemy, that the, uh, the, the weapon that the enemy has, but uh, certainly in the top three, I would guess, would be deception, because he, is a, he's, he has always operated, and his success has, has come uh, from being able to deceive people. Um, his his um, ability to uh, come at people as an angel of light, um, it, it can't last long. He can't stay in that state. Uh, but he comes as an angel of light. Uh, before he fell, he was, he was called uh, the, uh, Lucifer, the son of the morning, full of brightness, full of light, uh, but now he's full of darkness. He is the prince of darkness. And um, he, he is able to come as an angel of light to uh, people uh, and deceive them into thinking whatever they think. But he can't, he can't, uh, the devil can never stay in a, in a state of honesty for very long without having to show who he really is. Um, but he's always been uh, masterful at deceiving people, and um, it, it starts really with uh, with Eve in the garden, where he says to her very subtly, uh, he doesn't come to her as a big spooky monster kind of a thing, just speaks to her very subtly, and asks her a question that she knows the answer to, by asking her. Um, and I'll just paraphrase by basically saying, boy, there's a lot of nice fruit in this garden. You, you all can eat of all of it, right? 
And she said, well, yeah, all of it except this tree right over here, and, and we cannot eat of that tree. It's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Because the Lord said, in that day that you eat of that tree, you'll die. He says to her, oh, you won't die. No, no, no. You won't die, but you will become as gods, knowing good and evil. You'll, you will, if you eat this, you will have wisdom and ability that you don't currently have. And he appealed to her in that manner. He, she saw that the tree was good for fruit. It looked good. People reach out and put their hands on things that they know they shouldn't because sometimes it looks good. And, and so he, he deceives people by um, getting them to do things that they maybe normally wouldn't do. And uh, the writer of Hebrews talks about Moses rejecting the pleasures of life for a season. Now, if you think about that for a moment, if you think about how Moses was raised, and you go back and look at how he was raised, he was raised in a king's court as the son of a king. Although he's a stepson, he's still in line for the throne at some point. If something happens to Pharaoh's son, more than likely Moses is the next Pharaoh of Egypt. And so, uh, as succession goes. Um, but he's raised in a king's court. He has every luxury that is known to man at that time laid at his feet. He has servants, no doubt. All he has to do is say, I want something, and it, they make it happen. But he understands, and because of the call of God on his life, he understands that that is not the life for him, and he rejects that, the writer of Hebrews says, uh, rather than uh, having the pleasure of sin for a season, because we know life really uh, is just a season. As Gary mentioned a while ago, it's just a vapor. I think it's Peter or James that alludes to that. Life is like a vapor. It's here for a moment, and then it's gone. I've always used the analogy of uh, the big old kitchen matches that you strike. They got so much sulfur in them, you know, you can smell that sulfur. And, and you strike that match and it just plumes up and makes a big flame and then there's this big vapor. And then all of a sudden, all of that's gone. Well, that's kind of like how our life is. When you weigh it against eternity, it's just like that match. It's there for a second and you can see it, but then it just, it just vaporizes, it disappears. And so the devil has always been a master at uh, telling people that they won't die or they're not going to die right away. And I think about friends of mine that I've known that have gone on, uh, have passed away, and I thought, uh, you know, did I, did I do enough to reach them for the Lord? Uh, do I, but, and I think about them often. I think about people that maybe uh, didn't know the Lord and died without God, and they're burning in, in eternal flame. And I think, did I, did I do enough? But I want to talk to you today about uh, deception because the um, the spirit of the Antichrist is in the world and uh, has been uh, since, since he got kicked out of heaven, but he is more pronounced today than he ever has been because he's just about to step on the world stage. And um, I, I just want the church to be ready for that. I don't want to be one of these people that uh, are just going to say, well, you can just uh, live however you want to live and there's no consequence for that. I want to be one of those pastors that say you must be born again. You must acknowledge Jesus Christ as your, as your Savior. You must confess your sin and believe in your heart and be saved by the blood of the Lamb or you're in trouble. Jesus said, narrow is the gate. Straight is the gate, but broad is the way to destruction. The way to destruction is a broad street. It's a wide, it's, there's room for a lot of people. The way to eternity, that gate is a narrow gate. And so uh, I, I think we should think about that and, uh, as, as we live our lives and say, am I living for the Lord? If the Lord came, would I, would I be ready? So if you have your Bible, turn with me to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 
And I want to share some things that the Apostle Paul is talking to us about the coming of the Lord. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 says, Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ uh, our, and our gathering together to Him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or, or by letter, uh, even as if it came from us, as though the day of Christ had come. Let me say to you that Second Thessalonians, they were concerned, some of them were concerned by someone teaching a false doctrine that the Lord had come and they had missed it. So Paul is, is uh, telling them not to be shaken in mind or trouble uh, by spirit or by word or by letter, as if it came, even if, it, if you thought it came from me, in other words, as though the day of Christ had come. Let no one deceive you by any means. I think that is the most important sentence in this entire reading. Let no one deceive you by any means. In other words, n know what the signs are. Know who Jesus Christ is. Have a relationship with God that is good enough that your spirit will bear witness with false testimony or righteous testimony. Let no one deceive you, verse 3, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition. He's talking about Satan or the Antichrist. Um, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped so that he sits as God in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. Now, he's talking here about a future event where the Antichrist will set his image up in the temple in Jerusalem, and he will tell the entire world that he is God Almighty. Okay? Uh, do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? He's trying to jog their memory here. Uh, and now you know that it, uh, what is restraining, uh, restraining the Antichrist, um, that he may be revealed in his own time, for the mystery of lawlessness is already at work, only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. The Holy Spirit is the restraining force he's talking about. I'll talk about that a little bit more in a moment. Uh, and then, verse 8, the lawless one uh, will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy uh, with the brightness of his coming. And the coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs and lying wonders. Now this is, the, this is the power that Satan will have. He will deceive many by uh, the power that he has. He will have great power. Um, he will have signs. He will do signs and lying wonders. And with all unrighteous uh, deception, among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth, uh, that they might be saved, okay? And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie. Now, that's a serious deal. Uh, that, they, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So I want to say to you that there are things that we know um, that have to happen, uh, and, and there's not one thing prophetically that uh, I can see that needs to be fulfilled before the Lord comes and raptures the church out. I don't think there's one thing left for God to do. I, I think every, every sign that could ever be, have been given to a generation of people, and I'm talking about us, this generation, and our forefathers, uh, the greatest signs that the world has ever seen, first of all, Israel becoming a nation in 1948. Um, Jerusalem being recaptured by the Israelis in 1967. Uh, these are super signs to the church. You and I live in, a, in probably the greatest time to be alive in the kingdom of God that there ever was. It's perilous times, especially right now. It's, it's troubled times. There is no peace on this earth. But let me, let me clue you in. There's, there's going to be no peace until the Prince of Peace comes. There's never going to be peace on this earth until the priest, Prince of Peace comes. 
Jesus talks about in Matthew that, and Luke, he said they will cry peace, 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 and then will come sudden destruction. In other words, they'll make peace treaties, and they'll do peace treaties, and they'll make peace treaties with Israel and the Arabs and the uh, Israelis, and uh, they'll, they'll all come together and sit down at a table and sign a document, but it'll be as, as phony as it can be because Jesus said when they cry, peace, peace, then will come sudden destruction. We know from what Ezekiel teaches us that there will be a nuclear war, especially in that region, and uh, that's, that is the next global hotspot uh, on the earth. We know that the spirit of the Antichrist is here. We know he's here. Uh, he's more prevalent now than he ever has been. Bold. Bold. But he is held at bay. And the Antichrist cannot be revealed, as we just read, until the Holy Spirit is removed out of his way. And, the whole, and then the Antichrist, who I believe is alive and well, and we would know him if we heard his name, probably, is ready to step on the scene as soon as the church is removed. Well, the Holy Spirit doesn't leave. Some people teach that, but the Holy Spirit will be here because there's people saved during the tribulation, and that can't happen without the help of the Holy Spirit, as well as they, the Holy Spirit will cover the nation of Israel. So, uh, but he will be removed out of the way of the Antichrist, and the Antichrist can step forward, and there will be no praying church here. There will be a church left behind, but there will not be a praying church like you know a praying church, like this is a praying church. When you can call this, this group, or she can send out a global text, and this church begins to pray, how many know it matters? It matters right now. Who was it that told us the other day? Oh, my, my cousin, whose uh, husband just had surgery in North Carolina, shared with me, oh, she called me on the phone, that's what it was. She shared with me and said that she had the most amazing experience with the Lord uh, that she'd ever had since she'd been saved. And I said, well, tell me about that. She said, I just got this incredible download and this, this warmth of all of this thing, uh, all of these things coming to me, these gifts. She said, I don't know how to explain it. And she said, the Lord spoke to her. That is the, the impact of people that are praying. I said, oh God, we know there's power in prayer. But when you hear somebody say what has happened because people have been praying, and the power that there is, I'm here to tell you, it's a powerful force. Don't ever give up praying. But when this church, the church that is ready, waiting, and watching, and looking for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ, and they're praying, even as they were in the New Testament, even so, Lord Jesus, come quickly. Please come. In other words, an invitation. Please come and take us out of this place. They were uh, more hungry for the things of God and the heavenly things than they were hungry for the things on this earth, which are, are, are uh, temporal, and they're not eternal. Amen. Won't, won't find no trailer hitch on your coffin. There won't be one on, one on mine, and there won't be one on yours. So we know that the spirit of the Antichrist is here. We know that the rapture of the church has to take place. Uh, we know that there's a tribulation that follows that, the great tribulation, a time where Jesus said, there's never been a time on the earth like there will be during the tribulation, nor there will be nothing like it afterwards, okay? So the great tribulation, the restoration of national Israel where uh, Israel becomes a godly nation again. They're a secular nation now. And then there's the millennial reign of Christ on earth where the Lord along with the church that has been raptured and all of the saints that have gone on, uh, the resurrected dead, all of those saints will come back to the Lord, uh, come back with the Lord to the earth, and he will rule and reign a thousand years on this earth while Satan is bound in the bottomless pit and that he is held there in chains of darkness and there will be peace on the earth. The Bible said that the, uh, a child will put its hand in the hole of a viper and no harm will come to it. And a lion and, the, and the, the sheep will graze together. It'll be a time where there is a sinless world, exactly like God designed it, and the very kind of place that he placed Adam and Eve in. 
before they fell. It will be a paradise where there is no sin. Can you imagine where people love everybody? Everybody loves everybody. There's no more riots in the street. There's no more hatred. Let me tell you something. The answer to this thing that's going on right now is Jesus Christ. There's, there's not a, a skin color barrier here. Not for me. If the church will come together and say, you know what, God, we need a healing in this nation. We need a revival. Uh, that will turn things around. Amen. So the world is restless and um, peace is absent. And this, this uh, thing with this rioting is not uh, l merely limited to the United States. It's, it's become global. I saw the other night where 20,000 people in Paris, France are rioting and looting and doing the same things that are happening in our streets here. And it, it's a time of chaos. It's, it's lawlessness. Lawlessness. The Apostle Paul says, um, I, I think it's in um, 1 Timothy, or 2 Timothy, where he said, uh, uh, that there's, uh, get ready, perilous times will come. Perilous times are going to come. Perilous lawlessness uh, without, without uh, restraint. People have no restraint now. Have you noticed? They have no restraint. They have no restraint. It's one thing to protest. Let me tell you something. This thing that happened in Minneapolis, I'll speak to it for a moment. Absolutely wrong what happened to that man. Absolutely without question wrong what happened to that man. And the other three or four officers that stood there and watched it go by, as far as I'm concerned, they're as guilty as the guy that did it because they could have stopped it and said, hey, dude, it's enough. But they did nothing wrong. Everybody knows the difference between right and wrong. That was wrong. But burning and looting and pillaging doesn't resolve that. So I understand the anger. Trust me, I understand it. But I'm just saying that the, 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 there's no peace and, and there's lawlessness and, and there's uh, disregard for authority. And even the Lord talked about in these last days how uh, sons would turn against their fathers and daughters would turn against their mothers. That's an unnatural thing. There used to be a time when a father could say to his son, even if that son was 30 years old, Son, you know um, so-and-so. And that son would respect his father because, first of all, it was his father. Second of all, he's, he's older. Thirdly, he's been around the block a couple of times and he knows a few things. Instead of just having an attitude, oh, that old man's off his rocker. No, they respected. But respect has to be taught in the home. Amen. So I, I, I think if there ever was a time that the church needs to pause, take a moment from the busyness that we're all busy, take a moment and say, my God, we're living in the days of the coming of the Lord. And let us be aware of that. Let me get my family around the kitchen table. Let's get into this book and let's read some things and understand that the Lord is coming soon. And are we ready? Let me look my children in the eye and say, are you ready? It's important. It's important. Now, I, I read to you back in um, verse 3, he said, let, let no one deceive you by any means. I'm talking about deception today. Jesus um, spoke to his disciples uh, in Matthew chapter 24, and his disciples um, asked him about his coming, and I've preached on this a lot here, but they asked him about his coming, and Jesus was, when they, when they, they were kind of giving him a tour, and here's the temple, and look at all of this, and, and he said, well, let me tell you all something. There won't be one stone here left on another one. You know what? Just a few short years later, uh, by A.D. 70 or somewhere right near the temple, had been destroyed by the Romans. And uh, so that prophecy came to pass, of course. But uh, Jesus said, well, none, none of these things are going to last. Yeah, oh, yeah, it's beautiful. It's, it's uh, the replacement. Uh, it's not the, the temple that Solomon built. It's the one Herod, Herod built. They rebuilt it. But he said this, that none of this is going to last. And so it, it, 
it, it spurred their curiosity, and they, and he, they said to him, well, tell us when are these things going to be? What, what will be the sign of your coming? I'm curious about that, aren't you? And, and what will be the, how will we know the sign of your coming, and what will be the end of the age? All of the relevant questions that people are asking today. And Jesus said, the first thing out of his mouth, be careful that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name. Many will come in my name. So um, I, I think that we, if it was important, for, when, when they asked him, I want you to listen to this for a minute. When they asked him and said, tell us how we're going to know. What will be the sign? How will we know when you're coming? And what will be the end of the age? How will we recognize these things? He answers them eventually, but the first thing out of his mouth, be careful that no one deceives you. How many know the devil would like to deceive you into believing that the Lord's not coming? Or that, you know, we've been hearing this message. I mean, I've been hearing it now. Um, I don't know how old I was when it first started registering with me, four or five years old maybe, in church, cutting my teeth on the back of the pews like a lot of you, and, and raised up in that, hearing about the coming of the Lord. So some 60 years now, I've been hearing that message, the Lord's coming, the Lord's coming, the Lord's coming, the Lord's coming. And the devil would like to put it in your mind. It's like, oh yeah, the sky's falling, the sky's falling. The sky's falling like it's some kind of a fable. But let me tell you something, it's not a fable. Jesus Christ is coming, and very, very soon. Very, 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 very soon. Sooner than we realize. Look at the shape this world is in. Look at the shape where you, can, you cannot sell the truth these days, but you can sell lies all day long. The media proves that every day. You can sell a lie, but you can't sell the truth. And we read where the Lord said, I will, the, for, for those that reject me now, and just keep rejecting me, and keep rejecting me, I will send a spirit of strong delusion. Not just your average, uh, generic, everyday de delusion, a spirit of strong delusion that will cause them to believe the lie. And Paul talks about again in another place where they will b believe a lie and be damned. They will believe, the, they'll swallow it hook, line, and sinker and lose their very soul eternally. I want to look at, uh, I don't have this up on the thing, Marilyn, but uh, 1 John chapter 2 and verse 18, uh, the same John that walked with Jesus, the same John that was called John the Beloved, um, said, little children, it is the last hour. Now this is, what, 2,000 years ago, a little, a little over? It is the last hour. He's writing in his day, this is the last hour. The urgency in his spirit to get right with God is just as real then as it is now. So in 1 John 2, 18, he said, little children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard, that the Antichrist is coming. Even now many Antichrists have come by which we know uh, that is the last hour. Jesus said to the uh, Pharisees and those people that were constantly um, gouging him, I have come in my own name and you have not received me at all. But there's somebody else that's coming and he's coming in his own name. Him you will receive. He was talking about the Antichrist. Many will receive him. He will deceive many. He will have great power. He will do miracles. There are people that have been on the peripheral, what I'll call the peripheral of church. They've had a form of godliness, but they've never really, really got in. It's one thing to say I know God, but it's another thing to say that I'm blood-bought and born again. Could I tell you today that even the devils know who God is? Could I tell you today that uh, when people say to you, oh, I believe in God, could I say to you that, oh, you know, the devils believe in God? The word says, even the, even the devils believe and do tremble. They know. 
So it's not enough just to believe. You have to have an experience with Jesus Christ. Amen, church. So um, uh, this Matthew 24, Jesus said, answered them, said, Take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. Uh, you will hear wars, rumors of war, see that you're not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilence, and earthquakes in various places. Uh, all these are the beginning of sorrow. So I think we are certainly living in the days of the, of the birth pains, if you want to use it, in the preliminary stages of birth. For the, for the uh, end time, I absolutely believe we're there. The lawlessness, and let me tell you something. When men, when mankind gets out of control like they are right now, where they have no restraint, no restraint, that same attitude, that same spirit of the Antichrist is also in the leaders of a lot of nations of the earth, where they have no restraint. Did you know that Iran lives, lives every day for the moment where they can, the, the supreme leader there can say, push the button. And they launch everything they have at Israel. Even if Israel retali retaliated with a strike that would wipe out every last Iranian on the earth, to them it would be worth it because they destroyed Israel and they would go down in their minds in this incredible blaze of glory and they would go off to this paradise that they dream about and all the things that go with that. But let me tell you something, they are deceived. They are deceived because the, the, they are blinded uh, by thinking that, first of all, they can destroy Israel and they'll never destroy Israel. The Bible said that one that watches over Israel never slumbers nor sleeps. Israel has tried to be destroyed. They have, the world has tried to destroy Israel more than any other nation on the earth. And, they, and the last great event was the Holocaust in World War II. And, and we know that um, the, the Hitler tried to destroy them. Six million Jews, nearly all of the Jews in Poland were destroyed. All of them, almost all of them were destroyed, sent to death camps. Little children, little children murdered, sent right off to the gas chambers. And, 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 and didn't think anything about it. But I'm here to tell you, Satan meant it for evil, but God meant it for good because out of that came a nation that was brought back together in 1948 and they raised the star of David over a sovereign nation, Israel. It's still flying today. As I speak to you, it is still flying. It is going to be flying. And Jesus is coming back to Jerusalem to rule and reign. He's not coming to New York or L.A. or London or, or Sydney, Australia. He is coming to Jerusalem. He is going to touch down on the Mount of Olives. Uh, he is going to walk through that eastern gate. And he is going to walk up and sit on the throne that belonged to his father, David, uh, the king of Israel, who God said, I will, your kingdom will last forever. That's going to happen. Amen. So, uh, truth is no longer acceptable. And as I mentioned, uh, we live in perilous times. Uh, it, it, uh, we live in times that are full of danger. They're full of risk. Uh, there's places in town now I, I wouldn't want my wife or my daughters to go, or my sons even for that matter, to go uh, because they, they could be volatile in a hurry. So, um, if once the church is gone, once the church is gone, I would not want to be here. I, this is the last place I would ever want to be. It will be hell on earth. It will be hell on earth. And if you cannot live for God in, in these times, it will be difficult for you to try to live for God when you can't buy nor sell. Somebody said, well, I live out here, I've got my place paid for and everything, got my cars paid for, and I don't well, that's great. But you know what? If you don't have that mark, you will not be able to pay your property taxes because you can't buy or sell without that mark. If you can't pay your property taxes, they may let it go a year or two or three, but pretty soon they'll take your property away from you paid for or not paid for because you can't pay your property taxes and you would be glad to pay them, but you can't pay them because you don't have the mark of the beast. You won't buy food. You won't buy gasoline. You won't be able to escape and get out in some remote area. You won't be able to do anything 
There will be people that survive it. We know that. But I'm going to tell you something. It will be difficult, difficult, difficult if you miss the rapture. I, I'd say let's, let's, let's hit the safety button and, and let's, let's, uh, let's, let's all go together. Amen? Hallelujah. Stand with me, please, this morning. Hallelujah. Let's ask God's blessing. Father, we thank you today for your many, many blessings. Thank you for this time to be in your house. Thank you for this time to come and worship together. And God, uh, thank you for this time to hear from your word. Let, uh, let us be uh, careful. Let us be attentive that we don't um, miss an opportunity. <clears throat> let us be, uh, uh, pay attention and not be deceived. Let us know our Bible uh, let, us, let us have relationship with you. Let us sell our hearts out, Lord God, for you, Lord God, that we not miss that hour or that day. Let us be like the five wise virgins that have our lamps trimmed and, and ready so that when the bridegroom, co bridegroom comes, we are ready. We are watching and we are waiting. Father, I pray over this congregation today, Lord God, I pray that if there's any that need salvation, Lord God, you would bless them. And I pray that you would quicken them, Lord God, to get alone with you and call out for salvation today, Lord God. We ask your blessing on the rest of our week, Lord God. Keep us safe. We ask you in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. I walk through the dark.